This video was sponsored by the Deck of Many's new Animated Spells Kickstarter. What your favorite D&D race says about you. To everyone watching, just know that this video is meant for fun. Hope you enjoy. Dragonborn. You like to stand out, and are still unsure if Dragonborns canonically have tails or not. Dwarf. Long character backstories are super important to you, and you forgot that you had Brewer Supplies proficiency. Elf. You're still under the assumption that your 20-year-old elf looks like a 9-year-old human child. You've seen a fair share of fantasy movies and anime, and tend to have the most fun when looking for good character art online. Gnome. You picked this race so you could make a wizard or artificer. Up until now, you haven't dressed one of your characters up as a garden gnome yet, which you regret till this day. Half-elf. You put more detail into who your character's parents are than in your own. Halfling. You've never rolled a natural one. You're the person who makes up most of the party's crazy schemes, and are the person to suffer the least when they don't go as planned. Half-orc. Your characters always sound like they have a speech impediment. Along with that, your half-orc has also gotten the most death threats from the other player's characters at the table. Human. Popular opinion assumes you also like playing the fighter class. Even though your race is pretty generic, you see your character as the most unique person at the table. Tiefling. You play this race purely for the extra edge. That, or the fire resistance. Literally nothing is better than fire resistance. Aerokakra. Most DMs won't let you play your favorite classes. When you do manage to play them, you abuse their abilities to no ends. You are the bane to all low-level D&D sessions. Janassi. You're still on the hunt for the genie that made you. Before this campaign ends, you will get them to give you a wish spell. Goliath. You were probably bullied, or were the bully in middle school. When the party doesn't have a means of transportation, you're usually the mount instead. Asimar. Outside of the game, you're way too nice of a human being. If your favorite subrace is the fallen Asimar, though, then you're just looking for a new flavor of edge. Apparently, tiefling wasn't good enough. Bugbear, Goblin, Hobgoblin, Yonti, and Full Orc. You're frequently the dungeon master. If you weren't spending so much time hosting D&D campaigns, you'd totally make a character with one of these races. For now though, it'll only be with monster stat blocks. Furbolg. Druid and Ranger are your go-to classes, and you needed a race which could further amplify your tree-hugging nature. At this point, you're used to hearing someone bring up the Lorax in every campaign you join. Kenku. As a literal mockingbird, everyone, including yourself, gets annoyed at your Kenku's lack of vocabulary. At some point or another, you literally had to communicate through writing to get your point across. Kobold. You really had to think about a good reason your kobold was traveling with the other party members. If the dragon you used to serve is still alive, it's taking all that you have to stop your group from trying to kill it. Lizard Folk. You studied every body of water on the DM's campaign map before choosing this race. Tabaxi. There's three types of people who play this race. Furries, and anyone who wants to be an anime cat girl. The third type is the normie who's just playing the race because it looked cool, which everyone claims to be. Triton. You're always forced to ask the DM if they could allow your character to have dark vision. Tritons live deep underwater, and it's beyond your knowledge on how they can even see. Tortle. You're trying to have more armor class than anyone else at the table. You've considered naming yourself Ugwe, and taking levels into Monk doesn't seem half bad. Changeling. You couldn't make up your mind on which race you wanted to be. Kalishtar. You've been waiting at the table patiently for the day someone attacks you with psychic damage. It hasn't happened yet, but you're still hopeful. Shifter. Half man, half wolf, all edge. Warforged. You're somehow both the least interesting and most interesting player at the table. Also, you find not needing to eat as a bad thing over a benefit. I mean, you'll never be able to enjoy a hamburger, so I can see why. Gith. You're not too sure why this is your favorite race. If anything, you bring up the lack of skills and lore from the race, and then ask your DM if you could homebrew some of your own. Centaur. You prefer campaigns that don't use battle maps, have lots of large open fields, and don't have too many flying enemies. The deadliest thing you've ever encountered was a climbing wall. Loxodon. You've gotten so used to using your trunk as a third hand that other races now just seem handicapped. Minotaur. You're upset that your favorite race isn't even the size of a real Minotaur. Along with that, you've never gotten one of your characters married in a campaign before. Simic Hybrid. You prefer XP over milestones, and are usually the person to ask the DM if they've leveled up after every combat. Vidalkin. You're a perfectionist, looking to make one of your skill checks so unbelievably high that even the DM needs to stop for a moment to describe what a roll of 35 gets you on a history check. Verdin. You like doing your taxes. Lokatha. On some occasions, you've begged a cleric to cast Create Water on you. 
The fact that you need water to breathe has become a side quest for the party multiple times. And finally, for every race I didn't mention, you own every official D&D rulebook and are looking to get your money's worth. So there you have it. If any of you have any other race stereotypes that you know of, definitely share them in the comment section below. Thanks for sticking around, and a reminder that this video was sponsored by the Deck of Many's new animated spells Kickstarter. These higher level spell cards make casting your magic not only easy with simple spell instructions on the backs, but stylish too with a glossy holographic front. Level 6 through 9 for every D&D class is getting printed right now, along with a new tarot deck to make rolling your odds with cards that much more terrifying. If you'd like to check out what's in store, click on the link down below, and I'll see you all in the next video.